Welcome to Lunch of the Lord. I'm Pastor Mark. We're in James chapter 3. We're going to be starting verse 9 this lesson. But before we begin, Jeremiah 15, 16, Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and the rejoicing of my heart. Now, as we saw last lesson in verses, verse 8, we see that James says, you know, he's still continuing to talk about the tongue. And he's saying the tongue can't be tamed. We've tamed animals. We've tamed reptiles, birds, all kinds of things. But the tongue can't be tamed. It's full of deadly poisons. And, and it affects people. The, the, the words that come out of our mouth, it's like poison. And it can kill people's souls. Now we go to verse, verse 9 and it says, Therewith... Bless we God, even the Father, and therewith do we curse men, which are made after the image of God. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Now, the moral contradiction that lives in the heart of everyone, both Christian and non-Christian, on Sundays... We sing songs to God and we speak holy words to people. But on Mondays, we speak hate and condemnation and ridicule to our boss and to our co-workers. How much of it is... <laughs> how much of what we say is called holy gossip or righteous judging or spiritual condemnation. We put a garment, a real nice looking religious garment on our words in order to hide the poison. The reason why we curse men is because we take, we take the bait of Satan and we want to be like God. And we want to judge other people ourselves. We curse them because they don't meet our standards. The remedy for cursing men is to put God on the throne and realize that all people are ultimately accountable to God and not to us. That's the remedy. The remedy of cursing men uh, is to put God on the throne of our heart and realize that not only they, but we also, we're accountable to God. We'll have to stand to his judgment. We do not know all that has happened from the time that they were born until the point of their life, uh, the point of this life, uh, to be able to judge them properly. You know, we think we know someone, but we we, we don't know every, every uh, minute of their life. We don't know what they're thinking. We don't know what they think at night uh, in, when they go to bed. We don't think know what they think when they're alone by themselves. We don't know people like we, like we, think we do. To bless God is the highest use of our tongue in praises, in songs, and in prayers. But no Christian, no matter how holy they are, is exempt from the tendency to speak against someone. We view their life and their decisions and we sit on our throne and we judge them. As James says, these things ought not to be. We, we shouldn't. Let's read verse 11, uh, 10 again. Out of the same mouth proceeds blessings and cursings, not only to God, but to men. And he says here, my brethren, we shouldn't be doing this stuff. We shouldn't be speaking blessings and cursings from the from from the same mouth now verses 11 and 12 says does a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter 
Can the fig tree, my brother, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh water. Now these verses bring us again back to Matthew 12. Matthew 12 verses 34 and 35. Let's read it. It says here, O generation of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure brings forth evil things. The evil or the good comes where? From the heart. The treasure spoken of in Matthew is our heart. The heart contains all of who we are. The Christian should be careful to fill their treasure house with godly and with pure things. Fill it with the word of God that's hidden. Hide the word of God in your heart with divine truths, with comforts and experiences and gifts of grace and mercy. And let the Holy Spirit have rule over your treasure house. We need, to, we need to be careful what we see and what we hear and, and the things that we allow into our heart, what we believe in, because these things eventually will fill our heart and it will come out of our mouth. Then, when the Christian speaks, they draw from the treasure house of good things to be spoken. They will be words that are fitly spoken. Fill your heart with the word of God and that's what will come out. Fill your heart with, with whatsoever things are true and honest and just and pure and lovely. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, what? Think on these things. Why is Paul saying that? Because the more we think on those things, that's what will come out. That's how we will live our life. The evil heart is a house that is furnished with sinful memories and experiences, with anger, with depression, with fear and condemnation. All things that are taught and promoted by a rebellious and a sinful world. Satan's kingdom rules this treasure house. And the multitude of poisonous words have their origin in that treasure house. We, this is, I'm telling you, this is why it's so important for us to have, for us to hide the word of God in our hearts. Don't meditate upon negative stuff. Don't ne meditate upon sinful stuff. It's all this going to do. You're going to meditate upon it. It's going to become a part of you. And like he says in James chapter 1, eventually, whatever we think in our heart and meditate upon, it's gonna, we are going to speak it out. We are gonna, we're going to do it. Be careful what you furnish your treasure house with. Your heart is a treasure house. Be careful what you furnish your treasure house with. All right, next lesson we're going to continue. We're going to we're going to be looking at verses 13 through 18 in our next series and we're going to be dealing with the believer's attitude toward true wisdom. But until then, walk with the Lord. I know he walks with you.